Research has shown that humans possess strong inductive biases which enable them to quickly learn and generalize. Now, in order to instill the same useful inductive biases into machines, a paper was presented by Sri Jan Kumar at the NeurIPS conference, and it won the Outstanding Paper of the Year Award. Now, the paper is called Using Natural Language and Program Abstractions to Instill Human Inductive Biases in Machines. Now, the paper focuses on using a controlled stimulus space of two-dimensional binary grids to define the space of abstract concepts that humans have and a feedback loop of collaboration between humans and machines to understand the differences in human and machine inductive biases. Now, um, Francois Cholet believes that the core of intelligence is efficient generalization. That's all there is to it, according to him. And this is something that neural networks, in his opinion, cannot do. Now, um, it might be the case that all systems have their own inductive biases and intelligence is an extremely broad spectrum. It's important to make machines more human-like to collaborate with them and to understand their behavior. Synthesized discrete programs running on a Turing machine, computational model instead of a neural network substrate, offers promise for the future of artificial intelligence. Neural networks and program induction should both be explored to get a well-rounded view of intelligence which works in multiple domains and computational substrates and which can acquire a diverse set of capabilities. Natural language understanding in models can also be improved by instilling human language biases and programs into AI models. Srijan used an experimental framework consisting of two dual task distributions, one generated from human priors and one from machine priors in order to understand the differences in human and machine inductive biases. Furthermore, he demonstrated that compressive abstractions can be used to capture the essential structure of the environment for more human-like behavior. Now, this means that emergent language-based um, inductive priors can be distilled into artificial neural networks, and the artificial intelligence models can be aligned to us, the world, and indeed, our values. Humans possess strong inductive biases which enable them to quickly learn to perform various tasks and this is in contrast to neural networks which lack the same inductive biases and struggle to learn them empirically from observational data. Thus, they have difficulty generalizing to novel environments due to their lack of prior knowledge. Recently, meta-learning has been used to attempt to base neural networks with useful inductive biases. However, Agents trained by this method may not always acquire human-like strategies. Now, this paper explores the use of co-training these agents on predicting representations from natural language task descriptions and program induction models that add new learned primitives as a way to guide them towards more human-like inductive biases. Meta-learning is a useful computational framework to understand inductive biases and is a method of machine learning in which an agent is trained on a distribution of tasks with the aim of acquiring the underlying structure and abstractions that these tasks have in common. This enables the agent to generalize to novel environments and tasks faster and with a smaller amount of data. The goal of meta-learning is to enable agents to learn from many sources, both from past experiences and from new information. Now, meta-learning can be used to speed up training for reinforcement learning agents as well as to improve the generalization ability of reinforcement learning agents. Now, further experiments were conducted to determine how humans were using their higher order concepts to compress their language descriptions in the same way that program induction approaches add new concepts to the domain-specific language to essentially compress the program length. The results of this experiment provided evidence that abstraction through compression in these representations is a key driver of human-like behavior in the downstream meta-learned agent when co-trained on these representations. Srijan's results showed that when guided with representations from language and programs, the meta-learning agent not only improved performance on task distributions that humans are really good at, but also decreased performance on control task distributions where the humans perform poorly. So this indicates that the abstraction supported by these representations in the substrate of language or indeed a program is key in the development of aligned artificial intelligence with human-like generalization, capabilities, aligned values, and behavior. Now, um, 
I know I said I wouldn't publish anything on MLST in January. The reason why I've accelerated this one is we've got a book club in our Discord community and you need to join and, and check it out. But we're going to be discussing Sri Jan's paper this afternoon. Uh, probably it's already happened by the time you watch this video. But um, yeah, maybe you can join us on the next one. So without any further delay, I give you Sri Jan Kumar. Okay, amazing. Here we go. So I'm here with um, Sri Jan Kumar and uh, we're, we're at Neurips and um, I've had an absolutely amazing week. I was speaking with Andrew Lampinen yesterday and um, he told me about your paper, which uh, actually won the outstanding paper of the year um, at Neurips, which is an incredible achievement. Apparently it's only awarded to 13 out of 10,000 submissions. And this is already the most prestigious AI conference in the world. So that's amazing. Um, now, uh, Srijan's paper was called Using Natural Language and Program Abstractions to Instill Human Inductive Biases in Machines. Very interesting to our audience because we love meta-learning, we love discrete program synthesis, we love, um, you know, um, abstraction and symbolic generalization and like discrete approaches uh, to artificial intelligence. Uh, and we also love natural language understanding and you know, kind of uh, the symbol grounding, etc. So it's like your paper has got all of the components that we love. Anyway, Srijan, introduce yourself. Welcome. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Srijan Kumar. Um, I'm a fourth year PhD student working with Tom Griffiths and John Cohen and among other people in the Princeton Neuroscience Institute. Uh, so I'm broadly interested in abstraction in humans and neural networks in humans. Um, where the kind of uh, inductive biases that gives us uh, strong um, abilities to generalize across new tasks or learn new tasks really quickly. And in machines, how do we like instill those kinds of inductive biases to neural networks to get them to behave like humans? Right. Now, that, that's really interesting. Uh, we've spoken to Francois Cholet a couple of times, and he has uh, made the argument that neural networks don't generalize very well, or certainly not in a sample efficient way. Um, if you take into account the priors and, and, and the experience. So he created this thing called the Arc Challenge. And um, loads of folks on our Discord community have actually um, are, are working on entries for the new version of that challenge using things like discrete program synthesis, you know, over a DSL. Um, but anyway, why don't we start by just sketching out the paper and then we'll make it a bit pedagogical and we'll, we'll introduce meta learning and, and discrete program synthesis and library learning and, and, and how, how we do the, the, the language uh, priors. So um, let, let's start with the paper. Um, yeah, so uh, the paper is really about broadly uh, how do you instill useful human inductive biases in neural network agents. So uh, humans have these have this ability to learn things really fast or pick up new things really quickly and strongly generalize to novel tasks and um, uh, and this is because we have really strong inductive biases um, that are very useful in um, bringing kind of good knowledge that can help us generalize very well in these tasks um, and so the paper is really about how do you kind of instill these inductive biases uh, towards abstraction into neural network agents. Uh, so that's broadly what the paper is about. Okay. And um, what's the kind of um, the technical framework that you've used in the paper? Yeah. So uh, we start out first by you know asking like what are like abstractions? What are abstract structures? It's kind of a vague term. So you know in science we want to make things more concrete so we can test hypotheses. Uh, so uh, what we did is we focused on a controlled stimulus space of two-dimensional binary grids. Um, and the first thing we ask is like, what are the space of abstract concepts that people have on the stimulus space? And to do that, we did this experiment where we basically used this technique called Gibbs sampling people, which pretty much puts people on kind of a Gibbs sampling Markov chain where you have people making decisions and then about, about um, a grid stimulus and then they pass that on to another person and you repeat that process over and over again until you get kind of these samples on grid, uh, these grid samples that kind of reflect human, the ground truth, human priors on these grids. Um, so I think in the paper, if you like look at something like figure two, you can see like the samples from this um, kind of experiment. And you can kind of see that um, there's quite a bit of variation in the samples, but there are certain emergent abstract concepts that are kind of very salient to humans that persist across the samples like lines and shapes and letters. These are the kinds of things people are thinking about when they're processing two-dimensional grids. Um, and so that's how we defined the space of abstract concepts people have in kind of this domain. And 
Another thing we did was we built a control distribution where we sample from machine priors. So instead of having a human in the loop in the Gibbs sampler, we put a machine in the loop. Um, and what we get out of that in the, the distribution, um, so if you look at like figure two in the paper, you can see like, you know, um, uh, human versus machine samples. Um, and you can see that the two distributions look kind of similar, but you know, as a human, you can look at the control distributions, tell something something's kind of off, and that's because it's devoid of certain abstract concepts like lines, shapes, um, letters, etc. Um, and so, what we did then to test kind of acquisition of human inductive priors on our on um, neural network agents is we formulated each of these grids as a reinforcing learning game. Um, so it's based on the game uh, Minesweeper or Battleship. Um, so basically cover all the tiles on the grid, and then uh, the goal is to sequentially reveal all the tiles on the grid until you've gotten all the reward tiles, all the red tiles, with as little white tiles as possible. So it's RL, so like um, red is positive reward, white is negative reward. Um, and uh, so it's like a two-part paper. Basically, the first part is kind of defining this whole um, kind of experimental paradigm to show that humans and machines have different inductive biases because the kind, the tasks that humans are good at are the tasks that um, RL agents are bad at, and the tasks that RL agents are bad at are, are good at. Humans are actually also bad at. So you get this double association between humans and agents, showing that these two systems have different inductive biases. So that's the first part of the paper, just showing that humans and agents have different inductive biases. The second part of the paper is about. Um, Kind of, we. How do you actually instill human inductive biases to get the RL agent to behave like a human? And to answer that, we kind of we co-train the agent on natural language description and program an induction abstractions um, in order to guide them during learning to learn human-like inductive biases, and then become good at the tasks that humans are good at, and importantly, also bad at the tasks that humans are bad at. Uh, so that's a broad overview of the paper. Amazing. So um, the the first thing. Uh, so so I'm, I'm really interested in priors. Um, you know, human anthropocentric priors and whether the abstractions that we use to think about the world are deducible from those priors. And, and Cholet cites Elizabeth Spelke, I think, you know, she has this this notion of core knowledge that humans have to understand and think about the world. Melanie Mitchell talks about two modes of understanding. We have a human mode of understanding. Let's say large language models have a different mode of understanding. So uh, I suppose, like, first of all, do you have any intuition on why we should make priors more human-like and why we should expect computers to think more like humans? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, so the example I usually give is, um, I think with things like large language models and kind of diffusion models and things like that where you have to input like a prompt and then you get a picture or a text or something and then you th it looks kind of right but not exactly what you want so you input another prompt. This kind of feedback loop is kind of like collaboration between humans and machines. Um, and uh, one thing with humans is that uh, you know we find it really easy to collaborate with people that are kind of similar to us, that think similarly to us. Um, and uh, and so uh, you know one reason why we want to instill human biases in machines is that if you want to collaborate with machines and uh, work together with them then it can be more amenable for them to kind of uh, have explainable behavior and you know, and you can kind of predict their behavior if they have similar biases to you. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I understand that because I suppose the cognitive priors that we have, they inform how we think and how we communicate which ideas are intelligible and, and understandable uh, by other humans. Okay, um, that, that's really, really interesting. So. Um, why don't we bring in this this notion of generalization? So, so Cholet, you know, one of the reasons he advocates for, let's say, a discrete program search is that he thinks intelligence literally is efficient generalization. So, um, as well as it being, you know, intelligible and anthropocentric, it's also about symbolic generalization. And Cholet would point out probably that neural networks can't represent infinite objects; they're not Turing machines. There's something magic about these discrete programs. So, would would you agree with that? Um, yeah, I think. Well, the kind of position I would have um, is kind of uh, all systems have their own inductive biases. And um, ML systems, even though they might not generalize at the things that humans are good at, they generalize at things that you know they're good at. Um, and so broadly, um, intelligence is kind of like this broad spectrum. Um, 
And so, uh, you know, every, so, you know, if you want to talk about human-like generalization, then things like discrete program synthesis and symbolicness um, come to play. Um, and uh, so that's the kind of, uh, kind of way I see it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, th I think um, Shole kind of says, oh, there's type one and type two generalization. So it's a little bit like there's some underlying um, domain. So in the, in the discrete domain, generalization means something different to in the continuous domain. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And a lot of the kinds of things that um, people are good at, general, at, good at generalizing at um, come from uh, their kind of discrete domains like uh, planning or uh, arithmetic or these kinds of things that can be implemented in symbolic discrete algorithms. Um, and, you know, it's, it's actually like kind of a toss up whether we're innately good at that or um, whether that's something, you know, if you put someone through school um, where they have to learn like, you know, symbolic algorithms, then maybe that also helps us learn um, how, to, how to be good at this kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think like, you know, these are just kinds of interesting questions to yeah, that's a real mystery, isn't it? Whether whether it's uh, you know like Daniel Kahneman style or, or some weird mix of the two, maybe that's just a cognitive model that we're projecting onto how we think, and it's actually much more complicated than that. But um, why don't we break down uh, the framework here? So um, uh, some of the top level um, technical kind of architectural items you've used are you know meta learning, reinforcement learning, discrete program search. Maybe we should start with um, discrete program search because I'm, I'm a huge fan of Dreamcoder, for example. And um, most of these approaches use, let's say, a domain-specific language, and they um, do library learning and, and kind of dynamic abstraction. And, and you know, it's a really interesting setup. I'm, I'm very excited about it. So how, how do you understand discrete program uh, synthesis? Yeah, so program in synthesis, or you know, in cognitive science circles, we call it like program induction, um, broadly is like kind of an uh, interesting class of models um, that's kind of takes a very different approach from the current neural network based approaches, which is, um, you know, if you have a problem, you define like the relevant abstractions of the problem in a domain specific language. Um, and uh, solutions to kind of problems in this domain will be kind of compositionally composed of things from this uh, set of primitives that you, do that you define in this uh, domain specific language. Um, so uh, it's, it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, in AI, you know, there's always a tension between what do you build in and what do you learn from. And the program induction stuff is definitely closer to the what do you what do you build in from um, the beginning um, kind of side of the spectrum. Uh, so it's, it's a good thing to kind of look at the a broad class of approaches like neural networks and also program induction uh, just to see the whole spectrum. Okay, fantastic. And um, you're also using uh, a meta learning and reinforcement learning. We had a great um, conversation with uh, Dr. Tom Zahavi uh, from DeepMind, who's, who's big into meta learning. But um, can you just like give us a bit of an elevator pitch on why, why do you think meta learning is, is really useful in this situation? So meta learning is a really good computational framework to um, understand uh, kind of rigorously um, inductive bias, because um, you can think of meta learning as kind of uh, a process where you um, train on a distribution of tasks, and that task and that distribution of tasks um, kind of embeds some kind of um, uh, inductive prior. Um, and once you learn this inductive prior, then once you do another task from this distribution, then that's good. That inductive prior helps you learn that new task faster. Um, and so it's a really good framework for if you want to study things like generalization um, and stuff like that. Okay, fantastic. Now, um, the thing I, I really want to get to is, because in, in natural language understanding, we have this problem of, of pragmatics and grounding, and th th there's always this problem of, of how do we align AI models to the world, to our values, and, and, um, uh, and, and what you're saying also is how do we align it to our cognitive priors, which is very interesting. So, so you said you've instilled human language biases with language uh, as, well as, as well as programs. How do you, like, in, in your training architecture, how do you link the language to the model? Yeah, it's a good question. So during, um, during learning, when um, the RL agent is kind of playing the game, while it's uh, thinking about what action to use, um, it also has to simultaneously predict a, dis a language description that a human wrote of the kind of underlying um, grid task. Um, and so this, it's, it's basically implemented as an auxiliary loss to the RL objective. 
And if you add this auxiliary loss, then that will kind of change its kind of the way it learns during training. And as a result, it will, it will have different generalization behavior. Um, and um, what we show in the paper is more human-like generalization behavior if you co-train on human-generated language uh, particularly. OK, and are you using some kind of a language model to represent, let's say, utterances in, in a vector space, and then you're, you're feeding that into the training program? Absolutely, yeah. We use um, Roberta. It's a, lar it's a large language model. It's very popular. And so we push the descriptions through Roberta. It gives us an embedding. And then you can kind of use, uh, make it like kind of, kind of a mean squared error auxiliary loss predicting the Roberta embedding. Amazing. OK, so um, tell us a little bit about your experimental framework. And, and, and presumably, you, you, you ended up with with priors, which were far more anthropomorphic. Yeah, um, so uh, so I, I guess I mentioned the first half of the paper before, where you define this kind of experimental framework, where you have these two dual task distributions, um, human ones generated from human priors, and ones generated from machine priors, we call the control distribution. Um, and so you know, in our baseline experiment, we showed that if you train an RL agent on the uh, human-generated task, then it will actually generalize better to the machine-generated task than the human-generated task, whereas humans find the human-generated task easier. Uh, so, you know, this, this, so the question is, how do you rectify that? And basically, we explored a variety of representations you can co-train on using auxiliary loss, like um, human-generated natural language descriptions or synthetic natural language descriptions or representations from program induction uh, with only uh, primitives from the DSL or representation of program induction that also include library learning. Um, and what we found was that if you co-train on representations um, with compressive abstractions, then you get more human-like behavior. Uh, and so compressive abstractions are kind of, if you look in the paper, um, I think the best way to think about it is uh, if you look in the paper on the in the first figure, we have uh, synthetic language descriptions and uh, human generated language descriptions. So the synthetic language description is like, this tile's red, this tile's white. It's a very literal description of the board. There's no abstraction. But if you get people to describe these boards, we kind of naturally use certain abstract concepts like, oh, this kind of looks like a U, or this kind of looks like a hammer, or things like that. And these abstract concepts, um, we kind of naturally use in everyday life to compress the, our description links. And um, those kind of compressive abstractions capture the essential structure of our environment. And so as a result, if you co-train on uh, representations with these compressive abstractions, you get more human-like behavior. Right. And what really, is, <clears throat> what really excites me is over the, you know, like GoFi people, they try to represent knowledge. And uh, you know, e even in the ARC challenge, most of the folks represent the priors using some kind of discrete representation. And it's brittle. It doesn't work very well. And there's, there's always this problem with priors of where do they come from and how platonic are they and how intelligible are they. And what you've done is you've argued that language descriptions, right, and these program abstractions can act as repositories for human inductive uh, biases that can be distilled into artificial neural networks. So it's almost like you're, you're taking the, let's say, um, emergent inductive priors, which exist in language, and you're capturing them into, into the model. Yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, so uh, what I like about the paper is that, um, you know, the thing about um, inductive biases is people usually think you have to kind of have a different architecture or um, kind of train the um, agent in like kind of a weird way or build it in from scratch, basically, um, uh, or have these priors be explicit enough for you to like actually, you know, formalize them. Um, but in the paper, we argue that, you, you know, you can kind of harvest these priors um, implicitly from kind of a repository of um, these uh, inductive biases, which can exist in language or in programs if you're able to make them more explicit. Um, and so uh, learning useful inductive biases can be also from data and not just from like building it from scratch. Amazing. Well, folks, this is a really, really exciting paper. So uh, as I said, it's called Using Natural Language and Program Abstractions to Instill Human Inductive Biases in Machines. Um, Srijan, just before you go, how are you finding the conference? What are you excited about? Uh, yeah, the conference is awesome. Um, you know, like I'm meeting a lot of people whose stuff I've been reading for a long time. And then now I get to put a face on the papers. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, what I find exciting personally is um, 
kind of the variety of disciplines and backgrounds that are using machine learning, they're kind of converging on the same kinds of questions and hypotheses. Uh, and uh, that's been exciting to see in the conference. Amazing. Well, Srijan, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.